Hi class! We are going to discuss on the first lines of neoplasia. Okay, so we have five slides for today. We are starting with the benign epithelial with slide 81, slide 110, and 175. And then we go to the benign mesenchymal tumors, which would be slide 79 and slide 17. Okay, so let's start with slide 81. So this is what we term as villus polyp. Okay, so what is a villus polyp? So this is a, a polyp that is found in the gastrointestinal tract. Its proper term is what we call as adenoma. Okay, so when we are talking about polyps in the gastrointestinal tract, we usually have different forms of polyps. The first one would be the inflammatory, which is uh, known to be caused by inflammatory conditions. And then we also have the hyperplastic polyp, which would show an increase in the number of colonic glands. And then lastly, we have the adenoma. The adenoma would be different from the other two. It's because we need to look for dysplasia. So, Again, just a review, what is dysplasia? Dysplasia would mean that there are features that we do not see from normal looking tissues. So there, we look at the size of the cell. Uh, that's what we call as the pleomorphism, wherein there's an increase in the size and shape of the cell. There would be a, also in the nucleus, which we also would call as pleomorphism. And then there's an increase in the chromatin pattern. Like in this case, we have uh, hyperchromatia, loss of polarity. Okay? So those are the things that we need to look for. And those are what we call as collectively as dysplasia. D-Y-S-P-L-A-S-I-A. -S -S so this particular area, I just want to show to you the difference between the normal looking glands and the ones with dysplasia so look at the pointer this area is these are the normal looking intestinal glands or the crypts of Libercan and on this other area this is part of the polyp already okay so you try to differentiate the difference between this area and on the other side okay so let's look at the uh, at the normal looking cells normal looking glands Okay, so the normal looking glands, they are tubular, look at the lining, they are uh, lined by simple columnar cells, uh, the, 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 there's no stratification. If we go to the other side, there, the glands are noted to be lined by columnar cells that appear to have nuclear stratification. And there would be presence of a hyperchromatia. Okay? So this is what we call as dysplasia. And there are three types of dysplasia. It can be mild, moderate, or severe. If it's mild, there's minimal amount of the dysplastic features. Okay? If it's moderate, which I think this is the type of, of moderate dysplasia, there would, there would be an increase in stratification in hyperchromatia. In the severe, we would see the presence of large cells with prominence of the nucleoli with increased in chromatin pattern. But this one is moderate dysplasia. With regards to the pattern, okay, uh, we can. There are three types of of patterns of the adenoma. So they can be called as tubular adenoma. Okay, if we would see more than fifty percent of the polyp to be composed of tubular glands like this uh, we can also call them as villus adenoma if more than 50 percent would be composed of this villus pattern okay you always, you always look at the uh, the pointer and if it's composed of 50 percent tubular 50 percent villus then it's called tubulo villus t-u-b-u-l-o V-I-L-L-O-U-S So tubular, 
villus and tubulovillus patterns. So, uh, although that would be subjective, okay, because we do not have any meter or gauge to determine whether it's 50% tubular or 50% villus. Okay, so we go to the other slide, slide 110. Uh, this is called adenomatous polyp, okay. Similar to the other one, but the uh, the, the staining of the slide is not that good. Okay, so on this side, you can see that this would be the normal looking glands. On this side, the abnormal looking glands. Let's look at the right side first. Okay, so you can see the, these are the normal looking glands. On the other side, abnormal looking glands. There's an increase in stratification. So increasing stratification of the cells there although this is not a very good slide okay you can see the stratification of the nuclei uh, with prominence of the nucleoli here you have more of them okay so with regards to adenomas here you already also have more okay uh, look at the appearance there's stratification prominence of the nucleoli okay so these are features of an adenoma so uh, in our patients we need them to be uh, to undergo a checkup okay for presence of polyps at the age of 50 and when they have adenomas there would be an increase in their surveillance and the reason for this is because of the risk for malignancy. If you remember the adenoma carcinoma sequence, that would be the main reason why we are going to go for surveillance. So, size is an important factor with regards to the onset of malignancy. Uh, about 40% of, uh, of adenomas, more than 4 cm in size, are known to have carcinomas that's 40 percent and then another another factor would be the presence of the uh, dysplasia so if the dysplasia is moderate is marked uh, which in this case i think this is moderate dysplasia then if it's marked or severe dysplasia there's an increased risk for malignancy okay so so we have slide 110 and slide 81 so you are going to be asked what would be the genetic mutation that would be seen with adenomas okay, that is adenomatous polyposis coli uh, gene okay or APC so next we have slide 71 um, first we look at the orientation of the slide so what is this slide slide 175 is from the thyroid gland okay thyroid gland would be composed of these follicles that are lined by cuboidal cells what's within what in the follicles you have the presence of this pink uh, pink fluid which we would call as colloid and this would be the storage area for thyroglobulin which is the uh, pre preactive form of the thyroid hormones so if you're going to look at the other areas of the slide you notice that there is on the right on the lower portion there is something there that would be forming a nodule okay and it is encapsulated so this one would be the uh, the capsule we're going to run it down okay so notice that there's a capsule that would cover the entire nodule so slide 175 is what we call as follicular adenoma in the label it's called thyroid adenoma okay so follicular adenoma is an encapsulated nodule that would be composed of thyroid tyrosites okay tyrosites are uh, those are uh, cells that would form the follicles so as you can see if you're going to look at the the insides of the of the nodule you can see the presence of follicles very small follicles you do not see the colloid okay although in some cases you would appreciate presence of colloid so the thyroid uh, the follicular adenoma is uh, is a benign 
tumor that is seen in the thyroid gland. However, it needs to be distinguished or differentiated from follicular carcinoma because grossly they appear to be the same wherein they are encapsulated. Histologically, we need to identify for two criteria. One is if there's invasion of the cells into the capsule. That's what we call as capsular invasion. Okay? So, the, these follicles or these follicular cells should go beyond the capsule. Or, we look into presence of vascular invasion. So, we look into the presence of, of uh, for example, this would be a blood vessel. We need to look for the presence of the, it, the, the follicle cells, the follicular cells, the cells, into the capsule, which is not present in this case. Okay? So, this would be a follicular adenoma. Follicular adenoma. So, if there's vascular invasion or capsular invasion, remember those factors. Okay? Those are two factors. So, absence of capsular invasion, absence of vascular invasion, your diagnosis is follicular adenoma. Presence of capsular invasion, presence of capsular invasion, that's follicular carcinoma. Okay, it can be either. If, if, if uh, only one would be present, capsular or vascular, it still would fall under follicular carcinoma. Okay? And then we have slide 79. We are now with benign mesenchymal tumors. So, um, I'm going to show you a histologic slide because I want to show to you the smooth muscle fibers. Okay? Smooth muscle fibers are identified as spindle cells like this one. They have slender or elongated nuclei. Okay? So these are smooth muscle fibers. This is from the uh, from the endometrium. Okay? So let's look at the slide 79. Uh, slide 79 is, uh, it doesn't have a very good staining quality. That's why I shown to you the normal looking, uh, normal looking smooth muscle fibers. So slide 79 is lyomyoma. It's benign. Uh, its origin is from smooth muscle fibers. Do not try mesenchymal. Okay, so you uh, you look for the tissue of origin, and that would be smooth muscle. Okay, smooth muscle, not mesenchymal, smooth muscle, because you need to be uh, specific. Okay, and then it's fairly circumscribed. You can see the presence of interlacing fascicles of the fa muscle fibers. Okay, so you look at. Uh, the tissues okay so you have here the spindle cells these are the nuclei of the spindle cells they are seen in interlacing fascicles this would be the circular this would be the longitudinal patterns okay singular longitudinal patterns okay so this one would be benign okay next we go to slide 17 this is uh, osteochondroma. Okay. Uh, if you're going to read this one in bone in the in the bone pathology, you look for the uh, cartilage forming tumors. So uh, osteochondroma, as its name uh, would be derived from, would be composed of osteo is bone, chondro is cartilage. So, you have the presence of bone and cartilage in the tumor. Okay? So, if you remember the acetabulum, okay, that's the femoral head. Okay? It is similar in appearance because it's polypoid. The, uh, there would be a capping. There's a cap, CAP, composed of the cartilage. So, this would be the outer surface of the mass. Uh, this would be the cartilage. So you have here the hyaline cartilage, okay, composed of chondrocytes with a mixoid stroma. Okay. 
we go to the higher higher uh, the, the deeper portions you can see the presence of the bones or osteoid matrix the pink one and then we also would see the presence of this one the presence of the bone marrow okay identified with marrow spaces the fats okay here you can see the presence of the fats so osteochondroma is a benign tumor it's all its other name is exostosis e x o s t o s i s okay so it's associated with genetic mutation e x t one or two okay and uh, and majority of them would be solitary okay so i'm going to discuss tomorrow uh, on the next session uh the other slides so i, I hope that you stay safe and good night